Hello, and welcome to Alex Toth in Depth. This is Paul Fricke, cartoonist, comics professor, and Toth watcher. This is the program where we discuss Toth's work and influence on comics, character design, and visual storytelling. Subscribe on YouTube or to the podcast. Check show notes for links. For daily Toth art posts, follow at Alex Toth in Depth on Instagram and tell a friend. This episode is another Anatomy of a Page episode, and you get a bonus. I'll be doing two pages, the first two from Eternal Hour, a little horror story that was printed first in February 1969 by DC Comics in Witching Hour number one. Now let's take a look at the first two pages. You can see uh, the layout is different from each of the first two, uh, but it does set the tone and um, establish things, and we do have a uh, uh, some emotional impact in these two uh, pages. I should mention that uh, this seems to be a period piece, a fable of some sort, and the main character, Turwit, is being bullied by a bunch of little kids in the village. It has He's got kind of a Quasimodo uh, vibe. Uh, it is listed online as being written by Toth. I don't think this is an Alex Toth script, uh, so as I observe and uh, go through this and analyze it, I'll be assuming that Toth received this script um, from another writer. So page one, let's take a look at that. There is a, uh, a section on top, which is a masthead, which is an introduction by one of the, uh, the mascots, um, one of the three witches who's introducing the story for our purposes here. Let's do a little close up on the story elements um, instead. Uh, again, you can see that this is an unorthodox layout. Uh, generally, we would see the establishment shot first um, and then some close-ups of the other characters and back and forth and so on. Uh, Toth goes another uh, route. He focuses instead on close-ups um, of these characters, the bully kids and then Turwit, um, and then shows us the establishing shot, which informs the rest of the page. So there's a lot going on here about character interaction. Uh, we see the kids looking up of the clock tower uh, to the ledge where Turwit is, and Turwit is looking down. Uh, and the use of word balloons and sound effects help us uh, guide through the page uh, and also help in that interplay uh, between uh, the characters and across the page. Again, if you look more closely, we see a strong vertical um, of the kids. Now, generally, when that happens, your eye will go down and then back up or branching off from it. Again, we got that strong vertical of the kids on the left and then a strong horizontal of Turwit across the top of the page. The word balloons are wedged in between in kind of a triangle shape that bring us down through the page and then the sound effect of the laughter brings us across. Once we get to the establishment shot, um, then you can see that strong uh, triangle or vertical um, accentuating the, the clock tower, the statues on top, Turwood on the ledge, and the kids down below. I should mention as well, in the second kids panel, uh, there is a close-up of a, kids with, uh, a kid with a bunch of freckles on his face, and he shows up later, so Toth gives us that signifier uh, and establishes that um, character. Let's look at the flow of the page. Again, the kids are on that uh, vertical down and Turwit across. Even if our eye goes down, we're probably popping right back up. And, and, and if we go straight across, our eye is following the balloons. Once we get to the no, no, no panel in the top middle, well, that tail is pointing toward Turwit on the ledge. So Toth is telling us where he is and who that character is in the upper right and our eye is kind of going back and forth. The balloon placement again gives us that interplay, but the main shot then informs the whole page. I have no idea, once the reader gets his hands on this page, what they're looking. <laughs> and uh, it's not the traditional sequence, one panel, next panel, word balloon, ba ba ba. It's a more interactive, full page layout um, that gets our eyes darting all the way across uh, back and forth and all about, and uh, it's very intriguing and very cool the way he's done that. Um, I hope you think it's as effective uh, as I do. The way he set this up, the emotional impact right away between the kids and Turwit is pretty strong. Again, if we go down that vertical of the kids on the left, 
we're getting closer and closer on each kid. The angle on the kid is uh, on the lot, bottom three panels is kind of turning. Um, our point of view is going across and then closer. So there's an emotional impact there. Uh, and then that laughter across the bottom is a little more biting as they bully poor Turwit. On to page two, it's a simpler page with four panels. Uh, Toth is accentuating the height here, and usually that is done with verticals. In this case, he's doing with a horizontal, uh, kind of from uh, above Turwit's point of view, but looking down on him, looking at the kids. It's a really strong panel and, and puts us in Turwit's shoes uh, on that ledge. In panel two, we have medium close-ups of elders in town who are observing and commenting on what's going on. The, the drawback of this panel is we don't really establish where those elders are. I probably would have preferred a, a longer, a medium long shot on this to see the relation of the elders and maybe parts of the kids in the background at the base of the clock tower. The, the advantage, the way Toth did it, is we have some really nice uh, different kinds of characters of the elders. In panel three, uh, we have a straight on shot of Turwit uh, on the clock tower. Uh, gives us a little bit more of a uh, close up of the statues uh, atop the tower and the clock itself uh, as Turwit ascends. And, and then in the last panel, we're again looking up. It's not exactly from the kid's point of view, but we're looking up at Turwit accentuating uh, the drama. There's really interesting angles, especially in that last panel too as Toth is drawing the figure in perspective and the perspective very well to heighten that drama. Uh, you know, simple page, uh, but nicely done the way he set it up. And some of how he's doing this reminds me of another job he penciled maybe 10 or 15 years later for DC, The Challengers and the Unknown. There's a lot of verticals and, and height stuff going on in those two, and there's some elements here that, that are reminiscent. Worth pointing out. Uh, the rest of the story I, I'm, I don't think a lot of this story um, I think it's kind of silly it's kind of confused the way it sets up first two pages are engaging uh, then it gets more convoluted as it goes there's some kind of violent incident as Turwit is further bullied or he does something at the clock tower um, he's raining concrete blocks on the uh, on the citizens below and then we switch by page five to this little freckle kid is has turned up again, um, older as years have passed, and he's bullying Turwood again and goes up there and screams and uh, who knows what's going on. Um, it's it's a lot of back and forth and, and some silliness. On these pages, there are still some nice shots. There's good expressions with the, the kids, cool shots of uh, people looking up at the tower. And, uh, and then once we get into the clock tower, really cool uh, you know, uh, shadowed shots of the gears of the clock, uh, Turwit looking down, and, and so on. Uh, once we get to the last few pages, the villagers are attacking Turwit, and then we find out that, you know, when he was <laughs> uh, throwing those boulders, maybe it wasn't Turwit, he actually died many, many years ago <laughs> at the first incident, and maybe it was a ghost Turwit that did this, and then at the last <laughs> panel, they're all turned, Turwit and the kids, into... Uh, statues at the top of the tower for all time. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But again, even with a, a lesser script, uh, Toth finds ways to tell it well uh, and to make it engaging and, and to do some really nice stuff. He's got silhouettes going on in here, more gears of the clock. Um, the climax of the story, I think, needs to be either more time to play out or better written or uh, you know more delineated. Uh, in the art to really sell uh, the ending. Um, but even with a silly kind of story, um, you can still get good stuff out of it. So that's it for Eternal Hour and Turwit. Um, I would recommend you take a, a closer look at, uh, at some of the panels um, and pages in this story, or you know, look for other uh, you know, lesser known gems of Toast to find out um, which ones might be your favorites um, and um, and what you can learn from them or other artists that you uh, like or admire. You know, dig and ob observe and analyze and, and then apply it to your own stuff. Uh, so that's all the time we're giving to this episode, which was edited by Rudy Brum. This again is Paul Fricke for the Alex Toth In-Depth program. Alex said, fortify your own approach to your own work from the inside out. You are your most important teacher and student for life. Until next time, go 
with Toth.